Welcome back to ATS Academy. Today we're adding four new cables to our rack. We're going to punch them down to a 110 style loaded patch panel so we can show you how to do that in this video. It's always good if you have the slack, if you're going to be coiling up your service loop and your extra slack like up in the ceiling or it's going to be able to be hidden in any kind of way to take the extra slack and route it through the rack unit which the patch panel is going to go. The patch panel is going to be housed here. So we want to route our cables through that rack unit to prep them so we can punch the patch panel down with ease on your lap, on a table, on a hard surface, rather than having the patch panel installed in the rack and trying to punch the cables in from behind. That's always going to be more difficult. There are going to be situations where you're adding cables to an existing patch panel where you might have to do that. But in this case, we're not. This one's completely empty. We're adding it brand new. And this is the first four cables. They're going to be at a quad at the other end. We're going to show you what both sides are going to look like in the application for that. So bear with us. We're going to walk you through the entire process in this video. All right, now that we have our cables routed through this rack unit where the patch panel is going to be housed, we already have them labeled with wraparound labels. You can see the different labels on here. And we have them stripped back, ready to terminate. This particular patch panel is like a split configuration. You have one, two, seven, and eight on the bottom, four, five, three, and six on the top. So cable number one is indicated by that little circle and the number one inside indicates that cable number one is going to go in this position. For B standard, one and two is going to be orange, seven, eight, eight is brown. 4 and 5 is blue, 3 and 6 is green, so we're going to lace them in here. Do the same thing with 2, 3, and 4. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get each cable laced into the panel. You can see that this is D01, so we're going to put that in position 1. I like to go ahead and kind of lace out the, the colors as they feed into the panel. It's just that much easier when you know that your blue is your top left, Green is your top right, orange is your bottom left, and brown is your bottom right. If you can get them laced out that way, by the time you get to put them in, it's way easier. So now we're just going to come in. It has our white to the left and solid to the right. So we're just lacing this in. Once you get one pair in, they'll typically hold in place. So now we have one cable laced in. And you can see that color code that says T568B. Um, B standard is what we use. So we have our five and four is the blue, three and six is the green, one and two is the orange, seven and eight is the brown. We're going to continue to do that for all four cables. Now that we have all four cables laced into the patch panel, we're going to take our punch tool with the 110 blade. You can see it says cut right here. And it also says cut right here on the blade. You can see that this one side is pointy and this one's not. This blade is what's going to cut the excess wire off. So we're going to, with the blade facing outward, go in between each one. We're going to flip it around, do the other side, make sure your cut is facing outward. You do not want to cut on the inside because that's going to break your connection between the cable and the wire and the terminal and the patch panel. So making sure cut is to the outside. And that's it. Now the wires are all punched in where they're supposed to be. Always double check. Make sure your solids and your whites are where they're supposed to be, that you don't have any miswires or reverse pairs going through. I just look at white solid, white solid, makes it easy. So from here, we're going to feed the slack back through this rack unit. And of course, the slack is going to get coiled up above the ceiling as a service loop. We're going to get the patch panel in place. 
and then you just secure it with the rack screws. So now we have a cable terminated on the first four positions of this patch panel. So we will be able to plug in cable number one, for instance, to switch port one, cable number two to switch port two. This particular switch, the they're all up top. Three to switch port number three. And port four, which is our fourth and final cable, to switch port number four. So now we're at the other end. Here's the other end of those four cables we punched down to the patch panel. You're gonna have to use your imagination and try to envision them coming out of a single gang cutout the low voltage bracket that we would mount our faceplate to. Obviously in this video, we don't have that set up, but we're gonna show you the gist of it. We have a vertical cable, VMAX jack, which they make a crimp style punch tool. It's very convenient. We'll be showing you how to use that. But same concept. On the jack itself, it shows you A standard and B standard where the colors will go. If you're familiar with B standard, you know that one and two is gonna be orange. You don't even have to look at the A and B because the one and two is on there. The three and six on the other side, you know is going to be green because that's the pinout of a B standard. One and two is orange, three and six is green, four and five is blue, seven and eight is brown. So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna break this out, I have green and brown on the same side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Blue and orange on that same side. I like to fan it out and prep it because when I lay it in, everything's already in place. The white is towards me, the solid is away from me. So I can lace this in. Once you have it laced in, you can crimp it with the VMAX tool. And it's really easy. You open it up. The inside, when you punch it, springs. And then you can see the blade that's going to cut off the excess. So you insert your jack all the way. Make sure it's seated in properly. And you just squeeze it. It punches in all four wires and cuts the excess off. And you just put your cap on, observing the squared edge and the rounded edge, the rounded edge going towards the cable. We're gonna do the same thing with all four jacks. Now, before you crimp it or punch it down, you, it's always good to do a quick visual inspection, making sure I have my white blue, solid blue, white orange, solid orange, white green, solid green, white brown, solid brown. It's better to catch a mistake before you terminate than have to re-terminate. Now that we have all four terminated, we're gonna pop them into our faceplate. The faceplate is pre-labeled. There's an arrow on the faceplate. You may or may not be able to see it in there, but there's usually something that indicates the top or the bottom because these keystone jacks do go in a certain way. There's a solid tab on the bottom and a springy tab on top. You're gonna to wanna to put that solid tab in first and then pop in the springy portion. Now we have four jacks terminated in this quad faceplate. 
And at the other end, as you know, one, two, three, and four on that patch panel are going to coincide with these four jacks in an office or a bedroom, wherever you might want to do. So now that we have all four cables terminated to a keystone jack, housed in this faceplate and labeled, there's one more thing we have to do, and that's test. We're going to be using the Fluke Network's Link IQ tester. It has seven test probes that it comes with if you buy this version. One through four are already plugged into the patch panel, ports one through four. So we should see each remote ID as we test once again. Try to envision that this faceplate is secured on a wall plate in someone's office or bedroom. Whatever you want to imagine in your own mind, but testing has to be done in its final resting place. You can see remote ID one matches with data one, so we know that everything is good there. It passed the test. We're gonna go to two, get out of here, auto test, remote ID two, good. It's in its proper position and it passes up to 10 gig. We're gonna to go to data three. Test that one. Remote ID three, good. So far, so good. Everything's passing. Now let's go to four. Remote ID four, test pass up to 10 gig. You can save these, we're not doing that in this video, but that's pretty much it. Everything's ran, terminated, tested, the patch panels housed in the rack, and the wall plate's ready to be used for a PC, gaming console, access point, printer, whatever you might patch in.